The Cube at OpenStack Summit Atlanta 2014 is brought to you by Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. And Red Hat. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Okay, welcome back everyone here live in Atlanta for the OpenStack Summit. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host, Stu Miniman, and us at wikibon.org. And our next guest is Guillaume Aubuchon, CTO of Digital Film Tree. Uh, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much, glad to be here. You're up on stage there talking about OpenStack. Uh, first, tell the folks out there what you do. Very interesting business. We love, <laughs> we love it because you know, this is theCUBE. Obviously, we love media, we love what you do. So explain what you guys do. So uh, we're a full service uh, post-production facility for TV and film and uh, uh, you know, that means we, uh, we do the whole finishing process from uh, camera acquisition to uh, distribution and we do shows like uh, NCIS Los Angeles and Modern Family and we did Her last year with Spike Jones. so um, that's what we do and about six years ago, seven years ago we uh, really started to see that uh, we needed to write our own software in order to uh, sort of further our business and uh, continue innovating in post-production and that's sort of what led to our involvement in OpenStack. I love going to the NAB show when uh, Intel's there, they show up all the fancy geek you know, geek stuff going on. You know, people don't think about the tech involved in, uh, in Hollywood these days. What's, what's it like there now? I mean, how much tech, I mean, obviously you see all the blockbusters out there, it's all you know, special effects, everyone sees that, but there's some really good innovations that are, that are under the covers. Explain kind of some of the cutting edge stuff in Hollywood. Yeah, I mean, to, uh, in this day and age, to be a great filmmaker, you really have to be a, a superlative technologist as well. Um, you know, uh, we're shooting digitally, we're you know, doing visual effects digitally, you know, we're, we're pushing content around, you know, uh, we're shooting uh, television shows and films all over the place, across the country, across the globe. So uh, really to, to do the whole workflow and, and uh, to get the best creative experience, uh, you have to have your hands really deep into all aspects of technology. So as an artist, and you also got to be a coder possibly too, and knowing some Python, doing some data analysis, is that, is that the kind of the, the scene there now? Absolutely, I mean, you know, we like to, say that we're sort of entering this uh, era of software-defined post-production. So, you know, to manipulate that pipeline and to serve the creative process in the most efficient way possible and, and to really maximize your dollar on, on a television show or a feature film, uh, you got to be in there, you got to be writing custom code, you know. Every uh, TV show and uh, film is a beautiful snowflake. You're starting to see like uh, in, in high school programs and now even college, just the evolution of journalism and now film, film is converging. It's not just journalism anymore, or filmmaking, it's a lot of science pieces. So art, they're kind of calling it media arts and sciences. That's like kind of a new genre. Explain what that means for folks out there who aren't in the business, this big trend towards where the technology intersects with the creative process. What is, what's, the, what's going on there? Why is it so killer right now? Well, I think, you know, um, video is a, is a beautiful way of communicating and, and as uh, video has sort of been democratized into the hands of more people through technology, you know, they can communicate with video just like uh, filmmakers have been doing for 100 years and it's really, it's really been pushed into the masses. And the tooling is out there. What, what's the state of the art on tooling? It's getting in the hands. I mean, obviously, people think it's like vines and whatnot, but like high-end stuff now is coming down to the footprint size for you know, kids, adults to actually play with the technology. Is the tooling sufficient right now, in your opinion? Absolutely. I mean, you know, we. Uh, I always like to say that uh, the iPhone shoots 1080p, and uh, a couple years ago on NCIS Los Angeles, they used iPhone footage. So you know, you've got in your pocket the same cameras that are being used uh, to shoot multi-million dollar television shows. You know, even more so with uh, DSLRs that are on the market and, and um, you know, you, you can craft a, a video at the same level um, that we're doing um, on large scale projects. So, Guillaume, you guys went down the path to build your own software. I, I'm curious, you know, if that's difficult to maintain because you know I've, I've talked to friends of mine in the media business and they say you know we had a need we had to do it there was no other option and then you go three four years down the road and there's stuff that's off the shelf that might be able to be cheaper faster and easier but this is the way that we do our processes can you speak to that sure I mean we um, 
We definitely there was there was two there was two major motivators for us. Um, I think uh, we had grown weary of sort of being battered around by companies that were, you know, changing their software or going out of business and and sort of being subservient to to their software and their workflows. Um, and I think uh, you know we we it is difficult to to maintain, but but we really came to the conclusion that to grow the business and and to be financially successful even in post production, we had to iterate and create our own software to deliver a unique experience that we only we could deliver. So on the OpenStack side, you know you. You, most people think of, oh, a big bank is using it. You guys aren't like a huge bank, right? It's like you know, a huge customer. I mean, huge footprint, but you know, you're an active customer. What's, does OpenStack, does it matter to how big you are to have OpenStack? I mean, you guys are a good example of size. Yeah, we're, um, you know, we're a 40 person company in total, and there's about four of us who deploy and maintain OpenStack. And um, you know, you can, you know, OpenStack is, is, is so agile and it's so, um, um, uh, you know, you can you can evolve it and mold it to your needs. So, it, no matter what your size, it, it can make you more efficient if you utilize it correctly. Talk about some of the technical things going on with your business run on the cloud. Obviously, you, you you talked about the tooling, the creative process, which I could talk about that for an hour. It's so interesting, and I think it's very relevant, especially for the young kids coming in. I think what you're doing is fantastic and love it. But there's also back-end support. You need to have infrastructure right. to run it. So you need state-of-the-art on the delivery side. You need its workflow. I, mean, I can imagine the, if you're doing end-to-end -end delivery, it's probably very complex. What are you using for storage? Just take us through the sausage factory that, that is your business. You know? Sure, I mean, and we, as, you make the, as you make the product. Sure, you know, in, in, a, in a very basic level, we started out by, by needing uh, cheap, reliable storage. We had shows that were shooting 50, 60 terabytes of data a day. You know, it's going to even grow larger into the future. Um, so, you know, we started by implementing Swift storage as a way to not only um, build out large amounts of storage of digital film tree, but also build out uh, nodes of that storage on site. So, uh, we have two shows right now, Mistresses and Perception. Each of those shows has a Swift node in editorial that's backing up that raw camera data. They have access to their own raw camera files, raw video files, and that's being sunk back to digital film tree. So um, that was like a, you know, our first most basic need and it sort of grew into this idea of how could we push content, how could we do shows that were you know, across the country, across the globe, and, and sync that material and have instantaneous access to that material. I think the, the key thing we were being asked is, you know, especially in terms of video, is people were run, wondering, uh, creative uh, individuals on these shows, you know, I have instantaneous access to the content I produce on my phone. Why don't I have instantaneous access to the video that's being shot on my television show? So we really want to deliver that instant access, that same feel that they can do with, with a Vine or with a Twitter, but in their professional creative environment. I noticed uh, I was watching some of the hockey games, big Boston Bruins fan playing the Canadians, lost game six, but Hockey Night in Canada does really instant replay clips on Twitter, which I find fantastic because, you know, Stu and I were out last night, we couldn't watch the game, but on Twitter I'm getting really epic footage, almost instantly, of cut and, and cut and delivered to, to the Twitter feed. I mean, that's kind of where this was going, right? That kind of instance. So do you have the tooling on search? How do you find the clips? Is it indexed? Is it, do you guys write that software? Is it off-the-shelf software? Um, well, you know, we've, we've built a lot of software ourselves, but you know, we're, we're using a lot of uh, NoSQL databasing and, and OpenStack tools that, that allow us to search large amounts of metadata. And, and really the key is that you know, we have an infrastructure with OpenStack where we're aggregating all that metadata too. And, and so you know, we're using all that metadata to build associations and, and give our end creative a, a way of saying, you know, where is this actor in a shot? And they don't need to know the shot number, or the shot name, or the date it was shot. It just goes and finds that material for them. So, you know, really through metadata aggregation, we're, we're making that process much more efficient. 
What are the biggest challenges you see going forward for you guys and opportunities as well? I mean, obviously the tooling's being baked out, OpenStack's growing, it's, 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 it's evolutionary, it's a continuum process with the cloud. What are the, what's, your, what's on your wish list? Maybe the better question is, can, tell us your, uh, your uh, list for, you, for the top wishes right now. Um, I would say bandwidth, bandwidth, and more bandwidth. Um, we're at a point where, where cloud and OpenStack and storage technologies are maturing. Um, and you know we have great partners like Rackspace in the in the public cloud that we work with, but you know transporting you know 60, 70 terabytes of material every day is is um, doable but cost prohibitive. So you know really transport for us is a uh, is the big bottleneck right now. Yeah, you know, great to have you on the cube. Um, loved loved the. Uh the keynote uh, presence, and I love what you're doing, and I just want to get some personal comments. Obviously, in the Bay Area, which you're, where you grew up, um, I, we take a lot of interns in, and we have, I give talks to kids all the time about the future of journalism and film. What advice would you have them, you know, the kids who really have a desire? Um, there's some doesn't seem to be a track anymore. The, the old tracks kind of lead down kind of the old way, you know, the old school high priest say, oh, this is the way you do it. You're in the new school, you're doing some stuff that's cutting edge. What would you tell those kids who say, hey, I want to do, I want to play, I want to learn, and I just want to get involved in, 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 in the direction of filmmaking. What, did, what do you share with them? What do they do? Um, you know, I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very old adage, but if you learn how to tell a great story, then you know, no matter what you do, if you get into the technology side of it or the creative side of it, you know, that will dictate your entire career. You know, if you know how to tell a great story, then, then creating a workflow around technology to tell that story is, is uh, just the same as writing it down in a script. Yeah, so, so one of the things we hear at this show a lot is, you know, everybody needs to code, everybody needs to contribute. You guys obviously believe in contributing. You know, can, can you speak to that, following up on what you were just saying, kind of career path-wise? Sure, you know, you know, getting involved in a community um, and contributing to that community and having valuable feedback come back from that community is, I think, key in anything you do. And, and certainly, you know, writing code and writing and understanding the very building blocks of the technology you're working with is uh, is uh, key to a great career. Yeah. So you know, one of the one of the concerns we've had at the show is that there's not enough of the contributors and, and, and users of OpenStack that, that are talking. So what would you say to your peers out that you know what has it done for you to not only contribute but you know come speak at the show uh, and you know how would you recruit others? Uh, well, you know, I would I would definitely say for me personally, I mean, it's it's been a a whole uh, uh, breath of fresh air into my career as a whole. I, um, I brought up at the keynote this morning that I read a Yahoo article about uh, uh, four or five years ago that uh, the post-production industry was going to be one of the businesses that uh, was gone in 10 years. And uh, uh, really redefining that around software and, and finding a new path around OpenStack and the community was, was uh, really a reinvigoration for me. Yeah, and you know, we're, we live in the same um path ourselves with journalism. People said journalism was dead and you know, we decided to invest more in the video operation, which is essentially live and there's no post-production, it goes right to YouTube. When, we, when we're done, essentially it's stop and upload. We can probably do some more work with your mentoring, of course, but um, journalism is supposed to be dead too. I mean, it doesn't really die, it really changes, right? That's, that's what you're saying, right? Right, it's, uh, it's great storytelling. Storytelling lives on. Good it's content. Been going on since the beginning of time. Good content and good creative always wins the audience, as I always say. Gilmy, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate you sharing your story. Uh, great success, love what you do. Uh, creative and art and science come together. It's social science, it's computer science, that's our motto. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>